Today in the shop, we have a 2001 Toyota Highlander with 170,000 miles on it. And this car came in with some noise. Wait, from wait, the... wait, wait, wait. What are you doing working on a Toyota? I know it's a Toyota, but like, we still have to fix it. Yeah, but you're a Volkswagen guy. You have no idea what you're doing on this car. I mean, yeah, like, I know we normally work on Volkswagens, but our man Vince has got a broken car. We got to take care of it. Man, get this Toyota out of here. Don't listen to that guy, because in this video, we are going to be walking through the process of figuring out where Vince's noise is coming from, and more importantly, how to fix it. With pretty much any type of noise concern, you want to start in one of two places, either with a test drive or a visual inspection. I usually prefer to do the test drive first so we can at least attempt to isolate where our noise is coming from. This also really helps if you have a second person that can drive the car so you can listen to the noise. Also keep in mind, noises can travel throughout the car, so noise that sounds like it's coming from the right front may actually be coming from the back. On this test drive, we want to pay attention to a number of things like when the noise happens and what's the car doing when it's making the noise. Are we going over a bump and it's making a noise going up, or is it making the noise going down? A noise on the upside going over a bump is a noise when our suspension is compressing. On the downside of the bump, that's known as the rebound. You can also try and jounce the car up and down and replicate the noise while the car is standing still. This is usually my favorite way, especially with someone's help, because it allows you to move the suspension and do a visual inspection at the same time. And luckily, this one was pretty easy. As you can see, the strut looks like it's actually coming apart. As I move the wheel back and forth, you can see where the strut goes into the body, it's moving a whole bunch. So this is definitely the source of at least part of our noise. And big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for partnering with us on this video. For this Toyota, I was able to get a complete strut assembly. This includes the strut, the spring, the dust boot, and the mount already put together. Very different from the European cars where you gotta piece it all together yourself. We're gonna need to get the car up in the air, so make sure if you're lifting your car, you're lifting it properly using jack stands, wheel shocks, and anything else you gotta do to be sure you're safe. As you can see, this was a pretty easy visual inspection diagnosis. Our dust boot here is completely destroyed, and what that allowed is dirt and mud to get into our strut, and that's what's causing our issue. This is a pretty easy looking strut to replace. We have a few parts that we're gonna need to take off, like our sway bar end link, we have our lower mounts, we have uh, probably an ABS sensor and a brake line that is mounted to our strut body. We have two bolts here and we also have a couple of bolts inside the car that we're gonna take off. And I already went ahead and pre-treated that with our rust penetrant, so we're good there. We're gonna start with our sway bar end link. Now you notice that this little hole right here is actually full of dirt. You wanna get all this crud out of there or at least as much as you possibly can. That way, when you take your number six Allen and put it in there, it's not just mushing in dirt. What we're doing when we're using that number six Allen in the 14 millimeter wrench is we're counter holding the sway bar end link and loosening the nut that holds it on. Next, we'll take off this 10 millimeter bolt holding our wheel speed sensor bracket on. We have this 12 millimeter holding on our brake line. At the bottom of the strut, we have two 19 millimeter bolts holding on our wheel hub assembly. Now, you wanna make sure that you loosen both of the bolts before taking either one out. That way you don't get in a situation where the whole hub starts moving around on you. For this next part where we're gonna loosen the bottom mounts for the strut, I like to grab a floor jack, slide it under, and just give a little support to our rear wheel hub. <laughs> now, for the back, uh, we have to get inside the car and underneath this little access panel here is the top mount for our strut assembly. And this has three 12 millimeter nuts and I also had to really search hard to find my 12 millimeter socket because it's not one I use all that often. So we have everything loose now. We'll take a small pry bar and just pry. That away, you may have to wiggle it a little bit. It'll drop down. And for me, I'm gonna drop the whole assembly down so I don't scratch up the fender. And make sure you're paying attention back here to where your brake line is and where this ABS wire is. You don't wanna rip any of that stuff apart. And here we have our very dirty old assembly. It's really awesome that our new strut assembly is already put together and we could just slap it right in the car. However, you're not getting out that easy because I still wanna take this one apart and see if we can see a little bit more about what's going on. So we're at the spring compressor and we are going to take it apart. All right, so here is our bushing at the top. Oof. You can see our dust boot completely not keeping the dust out. 
<laughs> Whoa. Okay. So that clearly is not supposed to happen. Let's get all this yuck out of here. And what I think we were hearing was the rocking back and forth of this. Wow. Not to mention no pressurization. It's that. Oh gosh. Look at that. Oh goodness. Oh, it's juicing on me. Oh gosh. Oh geez. I think we confirmed our diagnosis that this was bad. <laughs> Let's get that new one put in the car. Now during the editing process, I got super curious and couldn't help myself but to take apart that strut that failed. So I went back out to the shop and cut it open. A completely needless step as far as fixing the car goes. However, doing this stuff is neat. And if you ever have the opportunity to take apart something that's failed, it's a great learning experience. As you can see, this thing was leaking, it looks like a mixture of water and oil all over the place. And the noise Vince was getting was clearly from the strut shaft. My guess is that the seal failed and allowed water in. You can see on the strut shaft itself, there is some pitting going on. So it's pretty cool that we have the opportunity to cut this open. So most likely full of water caused our damage. And now we have this beautiful latte of fluid that was filled up in our strut. Before installing that new strut, you wanna make sure you clean any mating surfaces. I'm using a wire brush to clean our wheel hub assembly. You wanna make sure that you pay attention to the alignment for our top strut plate. This one only goes in one way, but sometimes you can get them out of orientation and that can create suspension noise. So make sure you pay attention to which way these go in. Now, when you're going back together, you wanna to make sure you're supporting that knuckle a little bit with your floor jack. And it's often easier when you have an extra set of hands, one person on the bottom holding the strut and somebody inside the car tightening everything down. Going back together on this setup is so easy, but still a handful of things you need to pay close attention to. When going back in, just like coming out, you wanna make sure you pay attention to the brake hose and ABS wiring and anything else that could get damaged. Also, take a good look at your hardware and make sure none of that needs to be replaced. You also really do wanna to refer to the repair manual to be sure that none of the fasteners are torqued to yield, which means they need to be replaced every time. It's also really recommended when doing struts or doing shocks on a car to at least do both sides on that given axle. Meaning that if you do the right rear like we're doing, you also wanna go ahead and do the left rear. It may not be a bad idea to get an alignment done on the car afterwards as well. All right, so there we have it. We're all wrapped up. The only thing left is to take it on a test drive and make sure that our noise is gone. You know, this one was pretty easy, both on the diagnosis side and the repair side, which I'll take because it doesn't always happen. Links to everything we use down in the description. With that, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.